thumbs. This one is calculator active. Most of the time they are calculator active, but not always. Um, we've got a function that's defined when x is greater than zero. Typically, if they take the time to say that, it's for a reason. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, they give you some uh, an initial condition that g of 1 is equal to 2. They give you the derivative and they give you the second derivative. Okay? Um, so they ask us to find all values of x in the interval for which the graph of g has a horizontal tangent line. Okay? Where the graph of g has a horizontal tangent line. So where do horizontal tangent lines occur? At maximums and minimums of the original so on the derivative, it's where it equals zero. This is calculator active. So literally, all you need to do is you need to graph the derivative, and you need to find uh, where it crosses uh, between these two points. So really, to help yourself out when you graph it, uh, you need to go ahead and change your window. You don't need to look at the entire function. Go ahead and go to your window and make your x values between 0.12 and 1. I wouldn't change anything else. I would just change those two. Um, so you can see these two places right here and use your, um, use your calculator to find what those actual zeros are. Um, and it turns out that um, it occurs at, uh, you need to, you need, you do need to say g prime of x equals zero, okay, because you need to tell them kind of what you're looking for there, um, and then it happens at x equals 0.163 and x equals 0.359. Remember guys, I know I wrote this on a few of your um, free response questions not long ago, Three decimal places, always three numbers after the decimal place. Uh, anytime you're doing this on the exam, uh, write first three and just cut it off. Don't worry about rounding or anything like that. Just write the first three numbers and cut it off. Okay? Always, always, always accurate to three decimal places. Don't use the little repeating notation. Okay? Don't round. Don't just cut it off. Three numbers. Okay. That's fine. We can do symbols. Okay. Uh, B. On what sub intervals from 0.12 to 1, if any, is the graph of G concave down? So what are we looking for? Okay. Okay, but what if we're just using what we just graphed instead of having to re-graph again? Yes, okay. G is concave down where g prime is decreasing. So we're talking about efficiency, guys. Yes, it's true that that's where the second derivative is negative, um, but to be efficient, um, you want to uh, just use what you've already got graphed, okay? So it is, it is decreasing there uh, right here at the beginning to this point, and that's it. So you want to calculate that maximum point right there. Um, 0.12 and uh, 0.13 should be enough. Okay, the maximum there occurs at 0.129. The answer key goes beyond the decimal places, but you always do three on the exam. Okay, um, which occurs. And I'm going to do interval notation 0.129 to, uh, if you use the calculator to find the minimum, it would be 0.222. And they use the justification that that's where the second derivative is less than zero. So there are two different justifications for this. Either one is valid. Okay, either one is valid. <clears throat> write an equation for the tangent line to the graph of G at point 3. What do we have to have for equations of tangent lines? Okay, what does the derivative give us? The slope, okay? So we've got to have the slope and we have to have a point. 
So the derivative gives us the slope. So g prime of 0.3 equal to the sine of 0.3 plus 1 over 0.3. Um, use your calculator to calculate that. It is negative 0.472. Okay, so you get a point for that part. Now, in addition to that, we have to have a point. So we have the x coordinate of the point. We need the y coordinate of the point. Typically, we just plug that into g. Well, we don't have g, so how can we find g? Okay. The integral. Yes, we need to go backwards. Okay, so g of 0.3 would be equal to, they give us that initial condition of g of 1 is equal to 2 for a reason. So, um, we start at 2, and we're going to go, our starting point there is 1. We want to know the value of 0.3, so we're going to go from 1 to 0.3 of g prime of x dx. That's all you have to write, and then you just plug it into your calculator. Okay, do not try to do that by hand. Your calculator will calculate this. You do it, or you plug it into the calculator, and you get 1.546. So your tangent line would be y minus 1.546 is equal to negative 0.472 times x minus 0.3. Leave it in point slope form. On the entry key, they put it, uh, well, they still... All they do is move that over. Um, they just move the 1.546. They don't actually even put it in slope-intercept form. Um, so, I mean, you can do that if you really want to solve for y, but that's all I would do. Okay? Don't bother with distributing and trying to combine like terms. Okay? Yes. Yes. Anything you type, that's a good question actually guys, anything you type into your calculator for the calculator to do, write down what you typed into the calculator, okay? Not in calculator syntax, but write, write down the interval before you type it into your calculator because you've got to show them where it's coming from. Just like with part A, you need to write down g prime of x equals zero to tell them this is how I came up with these numbers, okay? Um, especially when it's calculator active, use the calculator to calculate. Um, write down what you put in. Okay, uh, that's a four-point part. Okay, you get one point four g prime of point three. So even if you can't come up with the entire equation, again, guys, write down anything you can figure out about the problem. Don't erase it just because you can't finish the problem. Okay, because uh, you get a point for that. You get a point for the integral. You get a point for the actual value of g and you get a point for your final equation. Last part, part D, what does it say? Does the tangent line to the graph at point 3 lie above or below the graph um, between point 3 and 1? How do we know? Yeah, the alarm's malfunctioning. Do we have to do that? How, how can we, remember we talked about this? The tangent lines, okay, if the concavity determines whether the tangent lines are above or below. If it's concave up, your tangent lines are below. If it's concave down, your tangent lines are above. So from point 3 to point 1, is our graph concave up or concave down? From point 3 to 1. What is the derivative doing? What is the derivative doing? It's increasing, therefore the function is concave up. So if it's concave up, the tangent lines lie below the graph, okay? On what interval? Okay, so um, you should say uh, G I would say g prime of x is increasing on 0.3 to 1. Therefore, 
g of x is concave up. on 0.3 to 1. Therefore, the tangent lines lie, the tangent line lies below the curve on this integral. And that's just a one-point part. Answer with the reason.